Welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where it's fine to fib. On David Mitchell's team tonight, uh, she says she'd rather be known for her journalism than her glamorous dress sense. Well, I'd rather be known for my comedy than for being a world-class lover. But we play the hand we're dealt. It's Emily Maitlis. <laughs> And uh, I'm not saying he went to a posh school, but the kids who had a packed lunch brought it in a hamper. From fresh meat and hit the road, Jack, Jack Whitehall. <laughs> and on Lee Mack's team tonight, he's Carson the Butler in Downton Abbey, a show that's meticulous in its attention to historical accuracy, even down to the colour of Lord Grantham's iPad. It's Jim Carter. <laughs> And uh, he's won so many BAFTAs, he's the first man in Britain ever to finish a tin of Brasso. It's the satirist and broadcaster Armando Iannucci. <laughs> and so we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Uh, Jim, you're first up, so would you please reveal one? Right. Uh, as a method actor, on the set of Downton Abbey, I like to remain in character all day and even help serve lunch to the cast <laughs> and the crew as Carson. <laughs> there are, David, what do you think? Right. Well, my immediate question is that I think on a big set like Downton Abbey with a lot of high-profile stars like Maggie Smith, there'd be an insurance issue with unqualified caterers serving lunch. <laughs> Nobody's ever told me there was an insurance issue. I, I don't do Maggie, I have to say. Uh, yeah. Maggie... <laughs> do you bring her her food, then? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't serve Maggie her food. What I do is I bring the food to the people on the, the dining bus. Uh, rather than go around to individual caravans or changing rooms. Why do you think that helps your performance? It just helps me stay in character somehow. I don't like to switch off. I lose concentration if I switch off. I just try to stay with it. Uh, it's it's tricky when you're serving things out of polystyrene on polystyrene plates, but it just helps well, me. Well, I was going to say, because if you want to inhabit the mind of the Edwardian or First World War butler, and you say, I'm really, I am that person, I am that person, and suddenly there's a camera, an HD camera and a boom in front of you, aren't you going to sort of scream, witchcraft, witchcraft? <laughs> <laughs> what is this madness? The aliens are here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, w I would never dream of doing that, because I'm in the bubble, you know, so I don't notice those things. Yeah. Do you do it with every role that you play? So if you were doing a film about, say, uh, like a man that liked wearing women's underwear, <laughs> you would be committed to wearing women's underwear for the whole shoot? You're the only person who's seen that film, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> But you're a dresser, obviously, so you would you would dress all the male members of the cast. I'm that a you butler, tend to madam. Well. A dresser. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are scenes in which you help Lord Grantham on with his buttons. Pants. And yeah, that's, right that, that's when the other valets have disappeared or are in jail or have been accused of murder and things like that. Yeah, which is <laughs> most. It's only an extremist that yeah. I, I yeah. do the cufflinks. A yeah. butler will sometimes do that. I can vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem with you, Jim, is you've got such a lovely voice. Everybody's happy just... Yeah, you know, yeah. just, you just sat there. You just sat there like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you flounder in such an authoritative way. <laughs> Viewers will be pleased to know that Jim's answer is now available as an audiobook. <laughs> That, that method acting thing, though, is true. I met someone recently that was in Hollyoaks, and they were really stupid in real life as well. <laughs> they, do. they do it all the time. I knew someone in Hollyoaks, and uh, his granny used to watch every episode, and he said, Granny, you really, you please don't... So what he did was, that if it was his last scene of the episode, he'd go like that, and that was Granny could switch off then, because he knew he was anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you think, David? I don't think it's true. I think it's the sort of thing people make up about actors, and I think in this instance it would be very impractical. I think on a long, busy filming you'd day... You'd spill I'll... things, wouldn't yeah. you, the whole time? Yeah. You'd spill things on your suit. The last thing Jim would want to do is Baked serve beans, other people food. <laughs> well, I think it's very feasible that an actor would do that sort of method thing, but I think Jim, having heard him and met him, he's such a cool cat. I imagine he's the kind of guy rocks up on set, gets handed the script, quick skim read, and then, in the words <laughs> of Snoop Dogg, just drops it like it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. he means it's a lie. Um, yes. <laughs> do you know, thanks to you, we're reaching a whole different demographic. <laughs> <laughs> so, they think it's a lie. Uh, Jim, truth or lie? 
I do drop it like it's hot because it is a lie. <laughs> yes, it was a big fat lie. Uh, Jim doesn't remain in character all day at Downton Abbey. Jack, you're next. I once hid a girl in my bed whilst my entire family came into the bedroom to have a conversation with me. <laughs> right, Lee. Now, uh, how old were you? Um, I was uh, 18. And a bit of a nervy, nervy question. How 15. old was she? No, she was... Uh, <laughs> she wasn't. She was of age. Of age? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 44. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was just of a normal age. She was a normal age. It's a bit ageist, isn't <laughs> it? Are you saying that Rob's abnormal? <laughs> well, yeah, if Rob was in my bed, it would be a bit weird. But... Actually, well, a lot easier to hide him. <laughs> <laughs> just pop him in the pillowcase. Throw him over your shoulder, off you go. So, you'd had a lovely, tender time with this young lady. The next morning arrived, the start of a whole new dawn, mm. and she was secreted, hidden, under the, <laughs> under the duvet. My dad comes in, knock, knock, and knock. I say... Get under there. Under there. And what did your dad there. say? No, no, no. Who's that? Who's that? I don't want to have to have an awkward moment with my dad introducing him to this girl, so I said, why don't you just hide under there? <laughs> was, it, was she a very thin girl? <laughs> because I would have thought you would have seen a body under a duvet. Yeah. You see, you don't understand the kind of toggage that I'm rocking back at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very thick duvet. Like, thick. Yeah, yeah, plenty of... Was it, was it winter, Duvet Jack? to hide. Was yeah, it winter? It was, it was winter. See, but I there's nothing worse right. than a heavy tog in the summer. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> but I have um, two duvets within the, the right. thing, and then so I take do one I. out. So do I. I take one away for the summer, Yeah. stick it back on for the winter. It's a lovely way of doing it's it. So it. Good. <laughs> I'm sure. God, is it always this boring, this show? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just going to cut to the chase here. You two, watch him very carefully while I ask this question. What was her name? Yeah, well, that's no... <laughs> I can't, I can't say on TV. <laughs> Why? Oh, very good. I want to protect her modesty. But do right. your whole family As I did come on that into your bedroom often? Oh, nice. Yeah, they just my dad go, oh, always, morning! Yeah, my dad will always come yeah. into my room, yeah. and he always brings in the telegraph and reads to me little extracts that he's found. <laughs> and then your mum's behind him, and then your brother and sister, and then like, oh, my mom, can we listen? Well, can what we listen? happened this one morning was that um, my dad had received a round robin, so he came in to read me this letter. I said hide under the duvet. Then my mum came in with a cup of tea, right. and my dad was reading this letter, so he was like, oh, Molly, Barnaby, why don't you come in as well? Sounds like a rough family. So... <laughs> uh, they were all round the bed and she was sort of hidden under there. It was quite a long letter as well, so I had to keep sort of giving her a bit of air. <laughs> and then... You're doing that with yeah. yeah. is, is it a single bed or a double bed? Uh, it's one of these ones that's like a small double bed. Well, like, they're called oh, single, single bed. bed. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah, it wasn't... Is this, is this the first time that had happened? Had they... Had you never I'd been had in a that girl, situation before? Or? I'd brought a girl back before, okay. but I'd been very careful to sort of sneak her out in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'd, like, distracted my dad, and then you just oh, go, so go, that, go, go. that was the plan. The plan was you were going to sneak her out without anyone noticing. Through the yeah. laund laundry chute? <laughs> um, I didn't know what a laundry chute is. The butler normally just takes oh, it from yeah. the room. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, but I was planning on sort of, you know, sort of sneaking out and not having to deal with this situation. Yeah. And, and at the end, she was under there for too long. I had to let her out. Not let her out. That's like <laughs> she, was, she wanted to be there initially. Um, the only way you can conceal someone lying under a duvet is to lie on top of them in exactly the same body shape that they are. Yeah. Really. And I was sort of, you know, I like it's sort of over her. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> no, no, I just like Doesn't so me. I could, you know, I had a I bit of my body on her. I don't like humans touching me. <laughs> All right, so what do you think, Lee? OK, I, I think... Well, sorry, Jim, what do you think? You think it's true? I am. Um, I'm borderline true, yeah, true. Borderline go true. true. Go on, then, we'll go with true. You're going to say true? Mm. OK. Jack Whitehall, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is a true <laughs> Scandalous. Yes, it's true. Uh, Jack did once hide a girl in his bed whilst his family came into the bedroom to have a conversation with him. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Benji. <laughs> So, 
So, Emily, what is Benji to you? This is Benji. He's helping me to fulfil my recurring dream, which is to do the splits. <laughs> Jack! Uh, how do you know Benji? Uh, this is Benji, and last year he hypnotised me and a friend so that we could watch the Harry Potter films as though we'd never seen them before. <laughs> And finally, David, your relationship with Benji? Um, this is my ice cream man, Benji. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not, is it, David? It really isn't. <laughs> this, uh, as I say, this is my ice cream man, Benji, and he calls me Two Flakes. <laughs> because, um... <laughs> Go on. Because it's... he always gives me Two Flakes <laughs> in my 99. <laughs> Lee, where do you want to start? Well, I want to start with Emily, because I want to mm. establish exactly what we're talking about. Are we talking about a reoccurring dream you have and you want to get rid of the dream, so he's helping you somehow with that dream, or it's a lifelong dream to do the splits? It's a recurring dream. Mm. Um, and he's helping me to get flexible in... You need to be... Don't need to right. do no, it's splits. Not, you need it's to get not to do with your flexible. mind, it's to do with no, your body. No, it's to help you achieve no. your goal of actually doing the splits. Mm. Yes, well, that's what, right. What angle have you got to so far? Um, what, what, right leg or left leg? <laughs> <laughs> to produce an angle, you need both legs. <laughs> <laughs> Trust so, me, that's my chatter line. <laughs> If it was the box splits, yes. box splits, uh, which is that where you're da -da, like facing forwards, yeah, not at all. No. If it's that way, yeah, left, uh, not bad. Right. Okay. That way could do better. So your best one is what your right leg forward and your left, left leg back. Left leg. I Great. Think. Well, let's make it easy for you. Do that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm not very... I, I, I can't... The, no, the point is... Mm. Uh, what? What is the point? The point <laughs> is... It's a recurring dream. That's really what? weird. I have a recurring dream with you doing the splits in here as well. <laughs> <laughs> I have a recurring dream that I'm a piece of cheese and a Wombles chasing me. <laughs> I don't wake up and then go up to the nearest man and go, I don't suppose you could dress as a Womble. I'll dress as a piece of cheese and you chase me. You don't then try and do it. Maybe you should. There are different sorts of dreams, though, aren't there? There are dreams you want to come to. You're not going to break into song again, are you, David? <laughs> <laughs> so what's he teaching you to do, then? Is it Pilates? Is it... Yeah, it's, technique? it's Pilates. Oh. Don't give a multiple <laughs> choice. <laughs> have you had enough now of Emily? Do you want to move on? Never have enough of Emily. All right. <laughs> D -D David, can I ask you a, a very mundane question? How much does Benji charge you for a Double Flake 99? <laughs> he charges me £1.50. How much to the regular customer is a double flake ice cream? A double flake ice cream is not available to the regular customer. <laughs> 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 what, what thoughts went through your mind when he... Presumably there was a time when he said, I'm not going to give you just one, I'm going to give you two. Basically, my thoughts were a mixture of pleasure and embarrassment. <laughs> oh. So, like in so many scenarios <laughs> in my life. <laughs> How often is Benji in your area? I mean, how many times a week <laughs> does, he, uh, does he service your street? Benji's ice cream van is often parked in a, at a certain place. Yeah. Where, where is this, where is this place? Passing by um, Queen's Park in north-west London. And why are you regularly passing Queen's Park in north-west London? Because I often walk that way from my flat to the BBC. Who affected the introduction, David? I mean, who proffered the name Benji? I mean... Well, I, uh, Benji proffered his own name. Did he? <laughs> on, on, in what circumstances? Benji recognised me yeah. um, in my capacity as, as, someone who, <laughs> as someone who has been on television. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, when so. were you on television? <laughs> Is it sad when summer's over? Do you know when it's the last time you and Benji will be no, I think together for another year? I think, thankfully, it's never quite clear which time will be the last time. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, in a weird way, we're both better off for not knowing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, just so to be clear, Benji offered you two flakes once because he's yes. a big fan yeah. of, of your estimable body mm. of work. And uh, that sentence wouldn't work without of work at the end, would it? <laughs> <laughs> and then gave you the name. To, you didn't say, oh, look at me, I, I'm David Two Flakes. You didn't do that. <laughs> you... No, 
she gave <laughs> you the name. No one knows, Rob, better than you how, how desperately keen I am to develop some sort of catchphrase. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but in this, in this scenario, I, it wasn't me, no. So and I think, actually, it wasn't the first time. I wasn't given the name Two Flakes mm. by Benji the first well, time. Well, of course I, not. That would be madness. It's sort of developed probably the second or third mm. Fourth time. or fifth, sure. It would, you'd Does need a pattern to have developed. <laughs> some sort of pattern had developed. Has he ever no. offered to put but anything else on your cone? <laughs> No. no. <laughs> OK, let's move on to Jack. Jack, remind us again of your connection. Um, Benji hypnotised me and a friend so that we could watch the Harry Potter films like we'd never seen them before. So you've obviously seen what? You've seen them all? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, right. I'm a massive pothead. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, so, and you were so desperate to watch them again that you got... Well, I mean, what, what, he's obviously a professional hypnotist or a friend who can do it. Um, well, basically, um, last year when Deathly Hallows Part Two came out and it was the end, it was really sad, and <laughs> I was going through quite a bad time, <laughs> and I was also trying to give up smoking, um, and Benji was actually helping me doing that, and we were talking about that, and, and I said, "What else have you done? You know, hypnotised <laughs> other people to do other things?" He said, "Yeah, well." He'd done it to someone that had watched Star Wars and then mm. enjoy that experience. I was like, that sounds amazing. Could you do that for me and some friends to watch? Mm. I think uh, after this films? show, people are going to want to use his services. <laughs> <laughs> when he's, when he's hypnotising you, what happens? Well, he puts you into a sort of transient How? state. Is he dressed as a wizard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does he get you into we a dressed, transient state? No, we what does he do? When he talks to you, he relaxes you. What does he say? Well, I can't remember. I was in a transient state. He's good, state. isn't he? <laughs> What's your right, Billy? Who, who do you think I it is? I don't know. Is it, it's it, listen, it's either listen. two flakes or two legs. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Not Harry Potter, then? I don't... I, I don't know. I, I, Draco Dorman Nunquam Titillandus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a couple of potheads in. <laughs> that is, of course, the Hogwarts school motto. Uh, Never yeah. tickle a sleeping dragon. Mm. <laughs> Right. Um, I tell you what, that's a good memory, yeah. considering you've technically only seen it once. <laughs> <laughs> right, we need an answer. Um, Lee's team, is Benji Emily's uh, splits teacher, Jack's yes. mind-wiping hypnotist, or David's flaky friend? What are you going to say? Oh, this is tough, because they're all <coughs> so not true. We're going to go for we the most it. ridiculous answer, we're yeah. going to go for Jack. You're going for Jack. Yeah. You're, saying it's Jack. Jack. You're saying it's Jack, it's yeah. the hypnotist, it's the Harry Potter. Oh, okay. So, Benji. Emily. Change it to Emily. <laughs> Change it to Emily. It's Emily. What are you saying? You're saying it's Emily, it's the splits. Jack, we'll go for Jack. Will we go for Jack? <laughs> you tell you what, we'll just tell you. <laughs> What are you saying? We'll go for Jack. Jack, yeah. Jack. Saying Jack. Jack. OK, right. Jack. Benji, would you please reveal your true identity? <laughs> I'm Benji, and I've been helping Emily achieve her dream oh. of being split. <laughs> wow. Wow. And the obvious next question is, would you, would you be willing to, to give us a quick split? Of course. Oh! Thank you very much, Benji. Thank you. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies. We start with... David. Last year, I was forced to abandon the purchase of a new armchair mid-transaction <laughs> because the shop assistant used the terms well gel and amazeballs. <laughs> What does well gel and amaze balls actually mean? I, don't I, I wasn't know. asking you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> amaze balls. What? I've never heard. Have you heard? Does amaze, amaze balls, balls mean good? Yeah, it's like amaze balls means good, good. Yeah. And well gel is is from Towie. From what? From what? Oh, shut up. <laughs> you must know what I'm talking about. No, you mean the, the only way is Essex? What does well gel mean? Jealous. <laughs> so he's selling you an armchair. What shop are you in, first of all? It's. 
a place on the Kilburn High Road. Right. I don't know the name of it. That's fine, that's vague enough. Good. <laughs> OK. It's a, like a sort of second-hand furniture junk kind of place. Yeah. Of course. Things aren't going well, David. Of course you're going to get out... <laughs> you're going to get out of Kilburn High yeah. Street to buy a second-hand chair. <laughs> So he's trying to sell you the chair, right? Mm. And I, no, I'm trying to buy the chair. You're trying to buy it? Yeah. And in what context does he say you're well gel? He was talking on his mobile. But how did... To who? I don't know. But are you mm. saying that you abandoned the transaction because you were put off by his... I, I, was, I, was, I was put off, I mean, by the poor customer service, <laughs> by <laughs> not really understanding a lot of what he was saying. And was amazeballs, was that part of the <laughs> transaction? It sounds so wrong coming out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what sort of chair was it? A Chesterfield, a low-back chair? Is, that, is there a Chesterfield chair? No. I thought that was a sofa. Well done, I was testing yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Well, if you're really fat... The part. armchair round I've been hoping for. <laughs> So what are you going to say, Lee? Is he telling the truth? <laughs> what do we think? <laughs> I think, um, I think this has got the ring of truth about it. He wouldn't be able to cope with the conversation with OMG and Amaze Balls and Well Gel in it. No, I think I... it would physically upset Physically him. upset him. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. did you leave specifically because he said Amaze Balls? Was that the point where you I... just thought, I've had enough? It was the fact that he was talking on the phone, the fact that he was saying things I didn't understand, the fact that I was just in general, stressed at talking to someone I hadn't been formally introduced to. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it going to be? You're I'm, saying a lie, say you're saying true. true. I'm going to say... <laughs> lie. You're saying it's a lie. Uh, <laughs> David, is it the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. Oh. Oh. Well, uh, Yes, it's a lie. Uh, last year, David didn't abandon the purchase of a new armchair because the shop assistant used the terms well gel and amazeballs. Next. <laughs> it's Armando. Oh. <laughs> I once had to abandon my car in a safari park after a baboon climbed through the sunroof, lay down on the back seat and fell asleep. <laughs> OK, so where in the safari park is the car? In the lion enclosure. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where in the safari park is the car? It, it's... <laughs> where do you think it is? <laughs> in the baboon area! Are you answering for that, Tina? <laughs> well, it could have been in the car park. It could have been in the car What would the baboon be doing in the car park? Yes. May have escaped. Yeah, but you can I'm assume not, saying, wasn't a I'm not saying that the answer to the baboon enclosure would have amazed me. <laughs> Do you wonder yeah, perhaps I if didn't, it... I didn't expect to have to defend myself to this extent with that well, opening question. It's a stupid question. Yeah. Where do you think he was? The gift shop? Well, if it's a, <laughs> it's a stupid question, <laughs> cut it out in the edit. No. To show you what the charlatan that you are. In the safari park <laughs> was your car. <laughs> the baboon area! Thank you! As I suspected. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway, so back to where we were now. You, the, you Where were we? In the baboon <laughs> area! <laughs> okay. So, th why was the sunroof open? It was. Uh, let, let me mime it for you. <laughs> why, why was the sunroof open? <laughs> we... Is that how you think sunroofs <laughs> work now, Jake? <laughs> when was the last time you had a car? Why don't we all open our sunroof? <laughs> let's get the audience opening their sunroof as well. Come on, let's all open our sunroof Come together. Um, <laughs> Emily, <laughs> open your sunroof, girl. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's a bit, still a bit hot in here. Should yeah. we open the windows? <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, okay. Uh, I, I can't drive a car. In my childhood, we had a sunroof. You opened it like that. Now you open them like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you, Rob puts you, his hand up and says to the chauffeur, "Can yeah. you open the <laughs> um, Anyway, why was the sunroof open? Well, we didn't realise it was open. Right. <laughs> That's what we did in our car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> each other, you two, aren't you? <laughs> the sunroof isn't there, is it? Okay. You've just, no, done that, the you've no. just opened the boot and let the baboon in. <laughs> <laughs> the 
So you're in there. You didn't know that the sunroof was open. No, no. What? No. We had, had, had it was a hot day, hot day and the air conditioning wasn't right. very good, good. And we had young kids in the back and uh, <laughs> and an we... extra one suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> the sunroof open, we thought we'd shut it, and right. it turned out later it was still open by about that much. Right. Yeah, the sunroof's <laughs> open that amount. You're driving slowly up, slowly, slowly yes. through the baboon enclosure. <laughs> yes. There's your, the kids are in the back. Yes. And you didn't see the baboon. <laughs> so this is a stealth baboon. <laughs> right. What alerted you to its presence? Right. As we were leaving the baboon area. <laughs> Where were we going? <laughs> <laughs> we were going to the giraffe area, and right. you can actually get out and feed the giraffes. Right. But my wife, who was driving, just suddenly look, looked in the mirror yeah. and said, Arm, I'm known as Arm at home. Right. Arm? Yeah. Arm. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. I thought you meant because she had no arms. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't be driving, would she? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what's that? And I turned around and saw a sleeping baboon. And <laughs> your kids are in the back as well. Why they they not how many children? It was a six, uh, seven seater. <laughs> they always want to go right at the back. Ah, so there was a whole middle tier yes. Yes. for yes. baboons. Yes. For baboons. <laughs> didn't notice a baboon crawling in. Of course in. they noticed, uh, but they didn't but say they it. They were loving it. Yeah. They <laughs> loving it. <laughs> They're saying, don't tell them. No. They all hate the baboon <laughs> for some reason. If you're They're all against wild animals in the car. It's <laughs> if you're four and two and an animal gets in your car and sits and sleeps in front of you. Yeah. They're yeah. getting the... Uh, they're, they're getting the, the big purple backside. This, this for them. Because <laughs> they're in the back, they're going... Yeah. This 3D film's brilliant. <laughs> Um, and, and how did this all resolve itself? Well, fortunately, the next enclosure was the giraffe enclosure, and you can get out, and there were people there. And the giraffes, yes, giraffes and the yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of the uh, warders... Yes. Jim's giving us a lovely giraffe. Oh, sorry. So one of the warders came and, what, what did they, shoo it out? Both doors open. They slid open. And yeah. it just scarped out. <laughs> what are you thinking? We need a decision. We need truth or lie. What are you going to say? What do you think, Emily? I think it's true. Mm. Do you have a clue yet? I, yeah, I think it might be true. It's pretty detailed. I think we're going to say true. You're going to say true? true. Yeah. yeah. You're going to say true. Mm -hmm. Armando, truth or lie? It was all a big lie. Oh. Oh. Of course, it's a lie. Putting a baboon through a sunroof? is the brand-new game show next on ITV2. <laughs> and that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that Lee's team have won by three points to two. Wow. <laughs> and my individual liar of the week this week is Jim Carter. <laughs> yes, Jim Carter. Honestly, he's so dishonest, he'd steal the shirt off your back then iron it and lay it out on the bed with the rest of your morning suit. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>